Hey folks, in this video I'm going to give you one of the most liberating truths I know of in the Bible. I'm going to give you a key practice for putting that truth into action. And be sure to stick around to the end because at the end I'm going to give you one key pushback to this truth that I've heard over and over again. I'm John Whitaker and welcome to the 5 Minute Bible Study where we believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology and connected to everyday life. And if that sounds like something that would be helpful to you, go ahead and click the subscribe button right now. Maybe ring the bell icon so that you can get notifications every time I upload a video. Alright, let's jump right into this 5 Minute Bible Study out of Romans chapter 6. Romans 6 mentions over and over again this idea of being set free from sin. Let me just read you a few of these phrases. So that we would no longer be slaves to sin. He who has died is freed from sin. When you were slaves of sin. Notice that past tense. You used to be that, but you're not anymore. Having been set free from sin. Again, this idea of we have been freed. It's an accomplished fact. So repeatedly, Romans 6 emphasizes this idea that we are no longer slaves to sin. And the imagery really is this, that you used to have a slave master. That slave master's name was sin. But now you're no longer under that slave master. You've been given a new master. In fact, in Romans 6, he says that master is righteousness. Or sometimes he says God. In our culture, our language, you might think of it about like an employee. Think, for example, of uh, if you change jobs, before you ever go to work in the morning, you, you get up, you get ready, and the first thing you do is you get on your phone and you call your old boss. Hey boss, is there anything you need me to do today? Anything you, you need me, any errands you need me to run, any uh, you know, worksheets you need me to type up for you, any phone calls you need me to make? Before I go to my new job, do I check in with my old boss? Of course not, never. None of us would do that, that's silly. Well, that's the imagery here in Romans 6. You used to have a boss whose name was Sin, but you've changed bosses and now your boss is righteousness. How does that freedom come about? Romans chapter 6 um, says this, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? May it never be, no way. How, listen, this is important, how shall we who died to sin still live in it? Notice what he says. You have died. If you've entered into Christ, if you've become a follower of Jesus, not you should die to sin, at least not here in Romans 6, you are dead to sin. Accomplished fact. You are freed from sin because you died to sin. Your relationship with sin is fundamentally changed and you are dead to it. You no longer have to listen to it. You no longer have to take instructions from it. You no longer have to take out orders from it as if he were your boss. You're dead to sin. Let's keep reading. Let's look down a little bit later in verse 6. He says in verse 6, Knowing this, this is something we should know, we should know that our old self, our old identity, our in Adam us, was crucified with Christ so that our body of sin, that is this physical body, this fallen fleshly body that's dominated and ruled by sinful desires, that's acquired all sorts of habits of sinning over years of practice, this body of sin should be done away with. Done away with doesn't mean gotten rid of. Done away with means nullified, uh, made void, sucked of its power. Like when you write void across a check, that check no longer has any buying power, purchasing power. Well, you're body of sin, this fallen fleshly you, is now void. It doesn't dominate. It's no longer in charge. Do you know that? We need to know that we've been set free from sin and that we don't have to sin anymore. We don't have to take orders from it anymore. We are freed from sin. All right, well, what do I do with that? How do I live that out? Well, here's where the key practice comes into play. The key practice is this. Look at verse 11. Verse 11 says, even so, consider, uh, logizomai in Greek, calculate, reckon, count it so. Consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Then you need to practice telling yourself the truth. I'm dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. And we need to tell ourselves that until we believe it, because God says it's true. And if God says it's true, then it definitely is true. And so the practice is telling yourself this truth over and over again. In fact, I would recommend telling it to yourself multiple times a day. Maybe start the day while you're in the shower six to ten times, reminding yourself, I'm dead to sin and alive to God. And tell yourself that truth until 
you believe it. I'm telling you, this practice changed my life. This truth changed my life. It helped me understand the freedom I had in Christ that sin no longer had to have his clutches on me and I no longer had to sin anymore, that I was free to live a righteous kind of life. Now, I told you there'd be one important pushback, a biblical pushback. Well, what about Romans chapter seven, the very next chapter where Paul says, the things I want to do, uh, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I do. What's wrong with me? Well, how do we understand Romans seven in light of Romans chapter six. We'll take that up in our next video next week. And so be sure you tune in for that. Thanks for tuning in to this study of Romans chapter six. I release videos every Thursday. And if you think this kind of teaching is helpful to you, then why don't you go ahead and just click subscribe right now. Um, you can also check out other videos. I'll link one right up above. And I've got a podcast that I release every Tuesday where I just take some time to teach through a text. You can check that out as well. I'll link that in the notes below. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week on the 5-Minute Bible Study.